Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to the latest video um, and in this video newsletter well what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about how to write how to write an SLP how to write a standard operating procedure um, this video has been kind of um, motivated by um, a gentleman called uh, Mark uh, Mark Kaganoff Mark very kindly sent me a copy of his book that he, he published and I was looking through it it's it's entitled ISO management systems the lean revolution so what Mark is interested in is lean ISO management and I was looking through the book and it's it you know it's a subject that you know well done Mark it, it's a subject that should be put in the public domain which is basically about how not to bury yourself in unnecessary bureaucratic paperwork how to get the ISO certification how to get the process under control but not create an absolute monster of a problem uh, and he, it, it's very practical because of this it's very practical so it's practical tips about how to create certain things not putting your um, not putting your company name in too many of the documents in case you get t taken over and you, you need to change the company name in 50,000 documents which takes three years by which time you've been taken over by somebody else that type of practical great practical advice and when I was I started reading it it just reminded me of advice that I give to my clients about how to write a good standard operating procedure okay so that's what this video is going to be all about um, you know what I'm going to remind you of again and again and again is this diagram you have a money-making process you have inputs you have outputs the only way to control a process is to control the out the inputs which then guarantee that the outputs are where you want them to be so that's going to be the centerpiece it's always the centerpiece of everything that I do and it should be the centerpiece of everything you do and writing standard operating procedures is no different what's happening in too many companies is you're applying tools constantly so you're asked to apply ISO you're asked to apply SPC sometimes the ISO often encourages you to do FMEA you might do layered audits because your um, your customer says so you do 5S and they're all floating as tools inside your organization and at no time do you take them and attach them to this diagram every single one of those is a complete waste of time if that's the case if you take the input output diagram you place 
these tools around that input diagram to get control, to guarantee the output and to make money. Then the bureaucracy makes money. That's what it's supposed to do. You're supposed to make money. Let's make piles of it. So let's have a look how it relates just to this bit of writing a standard operating procedure. Now, like a lot of these exercises, I'm going to do an exercise, like a lot of these things, we pick silly little processes, but I think in this case, I, I like this one, it works. We're going to talk about writing a standard operating procedure for making a cup of tea. And the first thing I'm going to show you is the standard operating procedure I typically see, which is we are going to tell a story of what I just did. All right, so we're going to make a cup of tea and the standard operating procedure just tells a story. And this is, this, this is the bad example, okay? So let's have a look at a standard operating procedure for making a cup of tea and we're just telling a story. So here we are, look, here's, here's the standard operating procedure. So as I said, it's just going to tell a story. It's like once upon a time, once upon a time, a man went to make a cup of tea. And what did he do? Well, here we go. Fill the kettle with water. Um, put the kettle back on the stand set the switch to on whilst the kettle boils get the cup from the first cupboard and place it on the worktop select a tea bag from the container and place it in the cup pour on the boiling water wait for the mixture to brew remove the tea bag squeeze in to remove the water and place aside go to the fridge for the milk add milk to complete the drink and there is my cup of tea finished. Now that's a typical standard operating procedure that I see people write all the time. Um, it just tells a story. It, it basically tells you how, how your arms and legs were moving. I, I went to the kettle, I filled it full of water. I went to the teapot, I got a, a tea bag out. I put some boiling water on the tea bag, I waited. Then I put some milk on it, etc., etc. Once upon a time, I made a cup of tea. It's absolutely useless in terms of pleasing the customer. Why is it useless? Because at no point is that diagram involved in the writing of that standard operating procedure. And you tear it up, light the fire with it. There is no value in that story whatsoever. So let me put the input output diagram in our story and now we can make some money and please the customer so here's my version of writing a standard operating procedure okay now the first thing look let's get the input output diagram loud and proud at the front of our thoughts so here are the key inputs to making a cup of tea the temperature of the water the amount of water, the tea bag type, the cup size, the brew time, the amount of milk, and the type of milk. And the two things that our customer is interested in is the taste of the tea and the temperature of the tea. In particular, by the way, this is my taste because I like a very strong cup of tea. In the UK, we call it builder's tea. I like a very strong cup of tea with not too much milk in it whatsoever. But if I'm gonna have milk in anything, it's always gonna be full fat milk. None of this nonsense with semi-skimmed. Right, so there are the variables, there are the inputs that are crucial to making a cup of tea so that we please the customer. Now the other thing I can do, because I've specified some things that are really important, suddenly I can now uh, get some photos, I can get some pictures, I can buy some equipment that helps me to run the process much better. So for instance, I've decided to buy a water boiler rather than uh, use a kettle because with the water boilers, I can control the temperature. Uh, we've got the, the cup size, which is 200 mil. So I've got that. 
I've got the timer so that we know how long it's brewing for. I've got some, I've actually got some visual management on the cup. So I've bought some cups with some visual management. I've got two lines on there. One is for the level of water. One is for the level after the milk has been put in there. And finally, I've got a picture of the milk because it's got to be blue top because in blue top in the United Kingdom, that means it's full fat. Um, and the other thing that's on that photograph as well is the, um, the sell by date. So we can also make sure that the milk is fresh and not past its sell by date. So that would be an important variable as well, which I didn't have on my original um, input output diagram. Now with those variables in mind, let's go through the standard operating procedure and let's make sure that we cover all of those variables. So here we go. It says, switch the boiler on and make sure that the temperature is set to 90 degrees. Whilst the kettle boils, get the cup marked 200 mil from the cupboard. Select a Yorkshire tea bag from the box and place in the cup. So in other words, I would buy Yorkshire tea. I wouldn't take it out of its box so that we know what the, the part number is or the material number is. Then it says, pour on the boiling water up to the black level indicated. So we have a set temperature of water. We put a set amount of water on a set tea bag. Then it says, switch on the timer and wait for 120 seconds. After 120 seconds, remove the tea bag, squeeze in to remove water and place aside. Go to the fridge for the blue cap milk and top up the milk to the blue level indicator and I've also added in there now because I hadn't got that originally making sure that the blue cap milk is within its sell by date and now we have a standard operating procedure that controls all of those input variables in our process. Now that's a standard operating procedure I've identified the things that make money. I've got the process under control. Then I wrote the standard operating procedure to include the things that make money and keep the process under control. The, the, the standard operating procedure is no more complicated, but that cup of tea is going to be bang on every single time. And by the way, if you get a new operator, you can show them very easily. By the way, when you're doing this particular task, there are seven things that are really important. You can tell them what they are. You can tell them what the standards are. Anybody could train that person. We no longer need old Joe to do the training who's been in the company for 40 years because he's the only one that can remember all this crap because it's in his head. It's on the SLP and it's a well-written, valuable SLP that makes money and that's what everything should do and then of course if you take your auditing process and you audit the SLPs then of course the SLPs make money the audits make sure the SLPs are used and the auditing process and the SLPs all make bucket loads of cash how else would you like to write your standard operating procedures